Welcome back, everybody. This box is sitting here like, yeah, I'm kind of a big deal. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit better, so on the mend a little, and I'm going to try and get through this box opening here because I've been dying to get into this thing. It's a box of Masters 25. Now, if you're not familiar with the set, there is a $100 card in this set, the Jace, the Mind Sculptor. There's a $50 card with the Chalice of the Void, and then there's several like $30 cards, including a rare, the Azura Lost But Seeking, or Azusa Lost But Seeking is like 35 bucks for a rare. So there's even like uncommons that are four bucks and commons that are a few bucks. There's tokens that are $3. So there's some good value in this set. So I've been dying to get my hands on one of these boxes. Finally broke down and bought one, and now there it goes. Now it's broken. Now we gotta open it up and see what's in it. So. I've uh, been really looking forward to this one. There's a lot of cards that I really like to play with in this set. So uh, that's another reason I was really big on getting this particular one. Uh, there's a lot of really good master sets out there, and I've opened a lot of Ultimate Masters already. Not a lot, but some. But this is my first Masters 25 box. I've opened a couple of Masters 25 packs and didn't get much value out of them, but let's hope we get a little bit more out of the box here. So uh, there's only, these are smaller boxes. I think there's only 25 packs in these. And sometimes I hear they like to sneak away, although I don't see how. But I've heard people say that sometimes the packs will get underneath this thing. So we'll double check just to make sure, but I don't see anything. So there we have it. It is now open. There's our packs. And I'm already bumping the camera. Jeez, terrible at this. All right, let me, uh. Keep my tablet open here. I got a little price list next to me to see if we pull anything crazy. Hopefully we get our money back because uh, these boxes are still around the $200 range. So they went down a little bit. They were up in like the 225 range, I think. Yeah, oh, that back was easy to open. But now they're down in the uh, the $200 range right around there. So uh, I didn't set up a place to put the packs. All right, I'll just stack them up there on the box. They're gonna avalanche on me halfway through. All right, so we're gonna kind of go through the commons a little bit slower because there is some commons worth some money in here. Um, don't see any yet though. Assembly worker, <laughs> good old reprints. Street Wraith, that's one of the uh, valuable uncommons. I think he's a couple bucks. So I guess we'll kind of put the uncommon hits way over there in the corner where you can barely see them. Cut through it. Worry and Hana Ships Navigator. Don't think that one's worth much. Choking tethers for a foil and a goblin token. I think the Kabold token is the one worth money, which is kind of kind of hilarious because uh, back in the Legends days, I used to have a Kabold deck. I called it Kabonk. <laughs> so it was all just zero casting cost Kabolds and then a bunch of stuff to pump them up. So it's pretty fun. <laughs> the good old days. Let's see. Disenchant, good card. Another assembly worker. Epic Confrontation. Twist the image. Okay, so we're in our uncommons. It's kind of hard to see the uh, the difference with the logos on these because the way they did the logo on this one. Browbeat, Source of Plowshares, a couple bucks. There's a decent little uncommon hit. A rat Catcher, not much there. Squadron Hawk, not much there. At least I don't think. I don't think I saw that one in the bracelet anywhere. <clears throat> But we'll keep digging, hopefully. We got 25 chances to pull a couple big cards to get our money back. <laughs> so all I'm hoping for is to at least break even would be nice. Uh, there's counter spells actually worth like a buck in this set, buck fifty or something like that. Uh, for the common counter spell. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Alright, the Swift Foot Boots is a couple dollar in common as well. Silver Dagger, Sigh of the Shinobi, and Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. It's our first Mythic, but not a really strong one. There's the Kabold. All right, Kabolds of Kirk Keep. I think that's the uh, token that's worth a couple bucks. Let me see here. Uh, Kabolds of Care Keep token. Yep, like $3 token. So, <laughs> I do love the Kabolds. They crack me up. Um, I'm not seeing the Gisela on here. She may be pretty much worthless. Yeah, the hand is only a buck fifty. Um, yeah, I don't see the Giselle at all. Oh, there she is. Uh, oh, she's actually six bucks. Okay, it's not bad. 
I don't know where to put the token. I guess we'll throw it up there somewhere. So let's keep digging. I don't want to make this video too long here. But it should be a fun video because I, I don't think too many people are opening Masters boxes. Especially not Masters 25. They've been gone for a little while. I think Cultivate might have been a decent common. There's a counterspell again. Vapor and Acros. Or Valor. <laughs> Vapor. Valor and Acros. Oops. Mesmeric Fiend. Rancor. Good old Rancor. Laquatus Champion. So we're getting all the bulk rares in the set. And Ishan Seed is our next foil. Getting all the bulk rares. Not getting a lot of the, uh, the good stuff here yet. Hopefully we get a nice clump zone of some, some good hits. I uh, don't know about you, but 200 bucks is a bit of money for me. A bit more than I care to spend for, for no reason. <laughs> Murder. Murder, death, kill. Okay, so you're totally lost. All right. Uh, a Stang. He's an uncommon. Huh, that's kind of funny. Uh, Corona Zealot. Merfolk Looter. And Elvish Piper. Uh, really cool card. I don't think it's worth a lot in this set, though, which is weird because, I mean, it's an awesome card. Uh, yeah, it's not at the top of the list. Oh, there it is. It's a $3 card. I don't see why this card isn't more popular. Um, so, it's a 4-drop 1-1, one, one, which is, you know, ludicrous. But the ability is 1 green and tap it. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Every creature is free. It costs you one green and tap in this little lady to put any creature onto the battlefield. How is she not a huge hit? Uh, Trumpet Blast. I mean, that card is awesome. And think about it, man. You could put creatures that you'd have no way of casting, and you can get them on turn, well, in green, that's like turn three or four. You can put them out there, you know? Because <laughs> you could probably get her in green deck out on turn two or three. And then the next turn, cast some big old creature right onto the battlefield. Dark Rit. I love Dark Ritual. One of my favorite cards in the set, or in, in Magic in general. Skeletons. All right, we've got the Goblin War Drums. Boros Charm. There's one of the one of the really uh, expensive uncommons. I think that's the most expensive uncommon in the set. That one is almost four bucks. So we'll put him up there, Treasure Keeper, and a Fitted Heath. So this is one of the uh, rare lands in this set. These are all running around that uh, like six to ten dollar range, I think. This one's one of the uh, less sought after, I think. Let me see here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Uh, eight bucks. So not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, and we got a Foil Thalia. There we go. Um. Thalia is, ooh, a foil is like 16 bucks. So, there you go. Decent hit there. Not bad. And a morph token. All right, so we're starting to pick it up a little bit. Get a few bucks back. A couple good hits in a row there. Oh, packs are already flying everywhere. Really should have thought about that ahead of time. Wow, this one's this pack is like really, really overprinted on the on, on the names. Can you see that? How thick the printing is on the names. Ah, prophetic prism. Another dark grit. Nice one. Let me see if I can. Well, I want to compare this real quick. Bear with me just a second here. Where's that other dark grit? Are they, do they look any different? Oh, no, I guess they're about the same. Okay, I guess all of them just really heavily printed on the uh, on the names. In this set, or at least this box. Exclude, Kavu Predator, Air Shaman. I used to stack him. He, he was fun back in the day. And a Mystic Snake. Not the greatest hit in here, but, but a good card. Really good card. And a Vessel of Nascency. Okay, whatever that means. There's a Foil Common. So, there's a lot of good cards in this set. I think they did a really good job building this set. I mean, they're not all winners, but you know, I mean, they can't all be winners, right? Giant Growth, <laughs> that was a powerful card back in the day. Disfigure, Dreadmaw, Regrowth. 
Regrowth's probably a couple bucks, I'd imagine. Not gonna waste the time to look. Nix Fleece Ram, Murpho Glitter again, and Mikokoro, Center of the Sea. Uh, I don't think this one's really super, super uh, expensive. I probably should have just had the scanner set up next to me, save myself some time. Uh, two bucks. So, not a big one. Death Head's Buzzard. All right, stack number two. So far, we're, uh, we're way behind value-wise of what we'd like to be at at this point. Not even really getting a lot of the uh, uh, super big uncommons and commons. Couple decent ones though. Red Elemental Blast, that's a good one. I think that's like a buck fifty. Angelic Page, Ginju of the Falls, Magus of the Wheel. Uh, cool card. I don't think he's worth a lot though. Um, yeah, probably not worth much. Cool card, uh, useful. But yeah, I don't see him really on the top list there. A full Quicksilver Dagger. Pretty looking card. Good artwork on that one. Nice foiling, too. Yeah. Skeleton token. That's a cool looking token. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Keep going. Packs are falling everywhere. Yep, I knew that was going to happen. I'm just going to start throwing them on the floor. <laughs> Curse of Maze, Squadron Hawk. Trumpa Blast. I was thinking that might be in there. Another Giant Growth, another Cultivate. Phantom Seer, another Assembly Worker. Ooh, Mistress Factory. Uh, I used to have a deck that was kind of based around these and the Tron Lands back in the days when uh, Chronicles came out. Uh, I had a lot of, I had all the original ones back then, but, uh, but yeah, when Chronicles came out, I just came up with this deck idea that was all lands that attacked. <laughs> I just kept animating my lands and attacking with my lands. So I had a lot of factories and uh, the assembly workers and stuff in there. It's all artifacts and lands. It's pretty neat. Quicksand, Fallen Angel, and Blue Sun Zenith. So, uh, Active Treason Foil. We're getting a lot of the, uh, the lower money cards, but not getting anything big so far, really. And our biggest card was that Foil Thalia, which unfortunately was our Foil Rare for the box, because I think they only had one Foil Rare in the boxes back then. I don't think we're going to get another foil rare, which kind of sucks. Because the, the foil uh, foil Jace pretty much would have paid for the box. <laughs> the foil Jace is $180, so <laughs> according to my price list. So yeah, that would have pretty much reimbursed me for the box. <laughs> uh, Blood Hatch Nantuku. Nantuko. Uh, Humble Defector. It's another Swords of Plowed Shares. Great card. And Rest in Peace. Rest in peace is a decent kind of mid-range, yet six dollars. So we're we're slowly chipping away at the value. A vampire lacerators are foil, an angel token. Great artwork on that one. There we go. Look at that. That's like really nice artwork. Oh, so chipping away slowly at it, but uh. Unless we get some really big hits, we're kind of not looking like we're going to come out winners on this box so far. We'll see what happens here. Accumulated Knowledge, good card. Pillage, Cortisur, Little Templar. Our uncommons are Watch Wolf, Will Bender, Cloud Blazer, and Rist and Port. There we go. That's a little bit of money back on the board. Uh, Rist and Port was a $10, $11 card. So there's an $11 hit, and then a Treasure Keeper foil. So the Rist and Port, we're getting some decent lands out of this box. So, uh, a few good lands so far. Can't complain about that. On Earth, I think, is like Buck. Haunted Fingraph. Haunted. Haunted Fingraph. <laughs> Borrowing 100,000 arrows. You know, when you gotta go hunting with 100,000 arrows, you might wanna work on your aim a little bit. Just saying. All right, uncommons. Blightning, it's kinda like lightning, but not. Hmm, very expensive lightning. Mesmeric Fiend, Utopia Sprawl, that's a really good uncommon, I believe. I think that one is one of the, yep, that's the second most expensive uncommon at 350. 
three fitty. And a reef worm. More bulk rares. Pretty sure. Don't think I saw him anywhere near the price, top of the price list. Friction Ghoul, another common. Oh, there's another Cabals of Care Keep token. Pretty bad when uh, we've gotten two tokens that are more expensive than most of the rares we've pulled in this box so far. <laughs> it's just not good. Her graders, oh man. That brings back some memories. Not good ones. <laughs> Pacifism, murder. Uh, what do we get? All right, Uncommons. Zeta. A lightning Bolt, nice. Lightning Bolt's just such a great card. It's so weird that they pulled that. I mean, that's Red's whole thing is cheap damage. That's what Red's supposed to be about. Uh, the lightning Bolt's a couple bucks. Um, oh, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Second Mythic is a big one. Chalice of the Void. That's a $50 card right there. Nice. There we go. So if you're unfamiliar with Chalice of the Void, uh, Chalice of the Void, it's a double X. Chalice of the Void enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. Whenever a player casts a spell with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Chalice of the Void, counter that spell. So it's just like a repeating counter spell for whatever, you know, you figure out which uh, which card it, their set requires to is required to win, and you cast this for that much, and there you go. They can't play it anymore. It's countered every time they try to play it. So there's our big hit. In fact, uh... Yeah, we're going to throw that right into his sleeve right away. There we go. Keep it nice and safe. Okay, so a little over halfway through the box, and we finally pulled a big hit. Really nice hit. I'm glad about that one. I was starting to worry that we weren't going to get any big hits at all, so glad we got that. Uh, still still uh, way behind Relentless Rats. I think that's a couple dollar uncommon, or a couple dollar common, I mean. Um, Blue Elemental Blast. That's a... I think, oh, I think the red elemental blast is a couple bucks. I think the blue might not be on there. Treasure Keeper, another Boros Charm. There we go. And a Strionic Resonator. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not on the, that's not on the price list. Uh, is it? Oh, there it is. It's a $2 card. A whopping $2. Woo. Uh, Ember Weaver. When you're talking about packs that cost like 10 bucks a pack, um, $2 cards not a good hit at all and that's one of the problems with these master sets it's just that the price was so outrageous i mean these packs retailed at like ten dollars i think nine or ten dollars a pack and you pull two dollar card out of them uh you know even with the the three dollar boros charm in there there's still only five bucks in the pack so that was the big problem with these i think crooks of mage uh spell bomb arbor elf Kindle with another Relentless Rats. And commons are Ancient Craving, Stampede Driver, Fierce Empath, and Notion Thief. No Money Thief. <laughs> he stole their value out of that pack. So there's your problem with these Master Sets. I mean, they're great sets. They got a lot of great cards in them, great reprints and stuff, but... That's the thing is nobody wants to spend 10 bucks on a pack of cards that they're only going to get two dollars out of arcane denial there's our there's our common um right that's the most expensive common i think let me look at the price list real quick where is it where is it yep so that's a two dollar common so nice little hit there finally we got one relentless rants a sift sift is a good card a little too expensive though deadly designs will bender Cloud Blazer and Rurik Tard the Unbowed. The Unvalued. <laughs> so, yep, nothing nothing nice there, I don't think. Uh, nope, he's not on the list. Alright, so we're not getting a lot of the cards I was hoping for, and we're down to our last stack here, so let's hope it we get a couple of decent hits in the end here. Let's uh, all right, so uncommons are exclude. Ash Barons, Will the Wisp. <laughs> this guy was a beast in the early days. Uh, this was one of the rares in Revised. I think it was the last time they printed it. It might have been a fourth edition, but I think Revised might have been the last one. So it's a flying one drop. It's a zero one, but it regenerates. So this thing will block anything and then just regenerate. Doesn't matter how big it was, just block it, regenerate it, because it's flying. 
That thing was such a beast back in the day. I love that card. A Chroma's Vengeance. Unfortunately, it's not a Chroma herself. Uh, Chroma's Vengeance, I don't think is worth much of anything. I think a Chroma herself is worth a couple bucks, but yeah, I don't even see the Vengeance on here. So, wah, wah. Oh, a foil lightning bolt. That's actually worth a pretty penny, though. That's nice. Not too often you see a foil lightning bolt because a uh, lightning bolt was uh, pulled from the sets before they had foils, I believe. So, lightning bolt foil is like five bucks. So, not bad at all. I do like the, the foil lightning bolts. All right. I want some of those uh, good promo lightning bolts, the, the the textless ones, full art ones. Those things are awesome. Uh, but, oh, there's another Arcane Denial. That's good. Uh, can't really afford to buy singles like that, though, just because they're pretty. <laughs> I do have some actual original uh, revised lightning bolts, though, so that's good. Herbalist, hey, another lightning bolt. Man, we're, we're just finding lightning bolts everywhere all of a sudden. Promise of Bunrai and Thalia, non-foil. So we got a non-foil Thalia to go with our foil Thalia. That's a lot of Thalia. Now I'm going to talk with a list the whole rest of the video because there's too many Thalias. <laughs> Mike Tyson's like, hey man, you better stop that. <laughs> Except he wouldn't say it like that. He's like, hey man, you better stop that. <laughs> oh God, I hope he doesn't see this video. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a magic fan, is he? <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> All right. Man of War. Angelic Page. Freed from the real. Cool card. You, there, there's some shenanigans with this card. I'm just telling you. There's some shenanigans. I'm going to make it happen. Uh, Lore Scale Kotal? Kotal? Never even heard of that card. And Hell's Caretaker. Great card back in the day, but I don't know that it's very uh, useful today. Oh, we got another foil rare, and it's bogus. Oh, man, a notion thief. I'm pretty sure I'm going to double check because now we got to foil one of these, and we had the uh, already had the uh, non-foil, but I don't think it's worth anything. I don't remember seeing it on the list when I looked over the cards for this set. So odds are we just got hosed on a, on a second foil rare. Yep, he's not on there at all. Um, yeah, I went all the way down to the dollar cards, and he's not on there at all that I can see. Unless I missed him. So, a foil rare and a foil swing and a miss. All right, four packs left. Let's turn into a kind of long video, but I was just kind of excited about opening this one because it's not a cheap box, and it's a really, really cool set full of lots of good cards. So, brainstorm, see? Lots of good cards. That was the original Scry card, but you guys gotta get to keep one. <laughs> Fathom Seer, Disfigure, Colossal Dreadmaw. All right. Uncommons, Enthralling Victor, Rancor, Genju of the Spires. That's a great little uncommon. And Azusa, nice. So this is the most expensive rare in the set. This is a $35 rare. So finally, another good hit. And then a Noble Templar and an Elf Warrior. Not Elf Mohawk. Um, I'm going to put her right in the sleeve here. And I, was, I only had two sleeves sitting next to me, so if I get another big pull, <laughs> I'm probably going to knock the camera over trying to get to another sleeve. So, just letting you know in advance, if I get a big pull, avert your eyes, because the camera may go crazy. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? A counterspell. Arbor Elf. All right. Only two packs to go after this one. Trusker, Ordeal of Hilliard, Brian Elemental, and Friction Obligator. Ob Obliterator. Friction Obliterator. I think this is actually a good one. Yep. $18 card there. And a Genju of the Falls foil. That's not bad. And that really cool skeleton token. He's on fire, man. He's on fire. All right. So there we go. That was a pretty good pack. We got a, a foil Genju and a, and a Friction Obligator. Nice $18 card, $19 card. So, not complaining about that pack. All right, two more. Are we going to pull the Jace at the very end? God, that would be epic. That would be so epic. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're not going to 
foil one because we got two foil rares, which is very unusual for one of these boxes as far as I am aware. I think you only get one. Jackal Pup. <laughs> uh, this one this one was a hijinks card back in the day. He's a one drop two one, but whenever he's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to you. So he's like a... Uh, what we used to do with him is we used to use those cards that would trade cards with your opponent and we'd give the opponent the Jackal Pup. <laughs> yeah, we, we were mean. All right, Crows and Tusker again. That was our last pack. Quicksand, another Will of the Wisp, and Blood Moon, nice. Blood Moon's a, not a huge money card, but it is a $14, $15 card, and it's a great card, and it's a little offset. Yeah, good thing I'm not saying these out for grading, huh? It's a Phantasmal Bear. Man, our foils have been kind of weak, except for the, the Lightning Bolt and the one the one good uh, Thalia there. And the Genju is okay, but... A lot of really big foils. All right, here we go. Last pack. This is for all the marbles. So far, I think we're still a little low. Yeah, I'm seeing about 50, 60, 80. I'm seeing about 150. 150, maybe 160. So, so far, I'm losing 40 bucks. So, there needs to be at least $40 in this pack. I'm probably going to doubt that. <laughs> Oh, brainstorm. Nice card. Jackal Pup again. Sift. Street Wraith. Okay, we got a decent uncommon. That's not $40, though. Invigorate. Genjo the Spires. Couple dollars. And a rugged prairie. I think this is the least expensive of all the all the lands. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, once again, I have wasted my money just to make a nice video for you guys. So <laughs> hopefully you'll give me a like or a share, or leave me a comment or something. Cause I, uh, yeah, it looks like I lost some money on this box, but I really wanted some of the cards that are in this set. There's some really good cards in here. So I, I imagine it's probably fairly close to even and out after I add in all the like two, $3 cards that were in there. Cause there's a lot of two, $3 cards in this set. So I probably broke even, but that's if I could actually sell those. But the problem is you can't really sell two $3 cards uh, because after shipping and stuff, yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, you'd lose money trying to sell a couple dollar cards. So really only the big money cards uh, sell for anything. So, But there you have it. There's a box of Masters 25. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please throw a like or a share or a sub or, you know, thumbs up, comment, whatever. Thanks for watching, guys. Stick around, watch a couple more videos. I'm sure there'll be a couple of uh, suggestions up here in the corners. So <laughs> thanks, guys. You guys take care. Bye.